Good evening, everyone, uh, and you're very welcome to our spotlight session on the humanities uh, here from IDT. Uh, you're all uh, really welcome tonight. We're going to start off a little bit slow, just waiting for people to 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 join us. Uh, and the format of this evening is that we are going to run through a description uh, of our courses. Uh, we have lecturers from each of the courses here. Um, Katrina Fay from uh, Arts Management, Dr. Yako Buoyana from English and Equality Studies, and Dr. Diogo Connell from uh, New Media Studies. Uh, we've also students uh, who are going to uh, talk about the courses. Uh, we have Catherine and Sarah, and we might be joined in a few moments by another one of the students. Uh, and we will uh, have a conversation, answer questions, and hopefully give you all the information you need about applying to our courses. So please, as Orla was just saying to you there, pop your questions into the chat and uh, feel free to ask us anything. And if we can't answer something here, we'll tell you who to ask and where to find that person on our website. So first off, we might start with just a brief description of what is IDT uh, and what it's like here. IDT is a public uh, Higher Education Institute in, in Dublin. Uh, it is an institute of technology um, and it is primarily known for its arts uh, as well as its business and humanities courses. So we're talking about humanities courses tonight. So we're talking about arts management, new media studies, uh, English and equality studies and our new course, English and media studies. So the key thing that I'll say to you about these courses is that none of them are portfolio courses. So these are courses you enter directly through the CAO, which is really important uh, uh, to know. It also means that you can add these courses to your CAO after uh, the February deadline. You can add them uh, up until the final close of the change of mind, uh, which I think is in May. Uh, or sorry, it's it's it's. Um, uh, the, the first close is in May and a later deadline uh, for change of mind after that. So please look at cao.ie for all information about those exact dates. And please, 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 please get your CAO application in before that first deadline, even if it's blank. You must get that in in order to avoid uh, having to pay extra money uh, for, for a late application or not being able to do so. So please make sure you get your CAO application in. OK, well, at five past five, what uh, I'm going to say is I'm going to give a brief presentation and then I'm going to hand over uh, to my colleagues uh, and the students here uh, to give some uh, more rounded information uh, about the courses. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a small uh, uh, PowerPoint. I am going to keep this very short, so don't worry, I'm not going to um, kill you with PowerPoint slides. Um, but just to say to you that uh, the four courses we're talking about tonight are Arts Management, New Media Studies, English and Equality and English and Media. Arts Management, English and Equality and English and Media will are three year degrees. So anyone who comes into our courses next September will be doing a three year degree. That's just to know the slight difference on CAO at the moment. This will be updated. Um, these will be three year degrees. New Media Studies is a four year degree. All four of these courses are level eight honours degree. So the uh, Diog uh, is going to talk to you about uh, New Media Studies in a few moments. One of the key things I'm going to say about it is that its entry requirements are uh, two H5s and otherwise to pass uh, the other subject in your uh, Leaving Cert. Uh, it's a brilliant course. It's 50-50 theory and practice. It's a great course because it allows you in uh, to work with uh, our staff and our equipment and our facilities here at IDT working in the National Film School, one of the top 20 film, one of the top 20 film schools in the world here in IDT. Uh, and you will take part in this course uh, uh, if, if this is the course you want to do, um, using some of that equipment, uh, learning from some of the same lecturers. Uh, but you get the benefits of being able to do this without having to go through a portfolio. 
Uh, the kind of careers you can go on to from uh, new media studies range from broadcasting, media production, social media content, creation and curation, journalism, advertising, PR, uh, but also blogging, YouTube, podcasting and more traditional media like radio, TV and film. DLA 22 Arts Management is uh, one of our premier courses here at IDT as well. Uh, it uh, is described by some of our staff and students as business with a twist. So it's a course that brings the best of business education uh, to, for the creative and cultural industries. So if you're interested in working in areas like uh, the festival industry or public relations for the arts or entrepreneurship for the arts or working with arts offices or uh, working in the theater or working in the music industry. This is the kind of course for you. Uh, you can see here some of our graduates from A22 Arts Management, people like Helena Burns, who is working in Castle Palooza, Michelle McCarthy, who's working in Madison Square Garden, uh, as well as David and Mark here, who are working, first of all, as on, an entrepreneur, and secondly, as uh, in the uh, art centres around the country. Great thing about arts management is that Placement is an integrated part of it, and even when we move to a three year degree, placement will still be a core part of that. So moving on to our new course, DL849 English and Media Studies, and I'll talk a little bit more in depth about this later on. Uh, this is uh, one of our new courses, a three year level eight uh, honours degree. Uh, it's a degree that brings together English literature and media studies. So if you're interested in writing, uh, if you're interested in in books, obviously, but if you're al also interested in films, TV and media, this is the course for you. Uh, it's different from new media studies in that this is theory. So you're you're not doing practical media making here. You're learning about media. You're learning to criticize media. Uh, and you're bringing that knowledge as well forward into the world uh, and the kind of careers that you can get from this range from teaching, uh, further study to be a researcher. And that's not just as a, an academic. If you hear on some of TV shows or radio shows, a researcher is someone who works for the presenter who's giving them background information. We've also people who have gone into be professional creative writers, poets, playwrights, novelists. Sarah Maria Griffin, who was the writer in residence here in Dunleary a couple of years ago, uh, is a graduate from the department of a, of a similar course, uh, as is Stephen James Smith, who is quite uh, a significant uh, spoken word poet from Ireland at the moment. You can also go into areas or some of our similar students have gone on to areas like marketing, human rights, social media, journalism, professional writing, commercial writing, copywriting, also production, script writing, uh, as well as, again, working in the traditional media, like being a radio presenter. And uh, moving on to English and Equality Studies, we have, uh, this course is, is similar to our previous uh, course, 849 uh, English and Media, in that Half of the course is English and the same English degree, same English modules that you do in English and media studies are done here in English and equality studies. So you get to meet students from both degrees and mingle and mix. So this course is different in that the equality side uh, re uh, replaces the media here. And in the equality side, you're learning about sociology, you're learning about equity, you're learning about social inclusion, diversity, race theory, disability theory, queer theory. You're learning about all these things quite in depth and you're bringing these to the fore in a very practical way. So uh, we've yet to have any students actually graduate uh, from this degree because it's only a couple of years old. Uh, but the kind of uh, work that we see people going into in this area range from human rights and NGOs, social media, again, uh, things like broadcasting uh, and journalism, writing, advertising, researching for their study, but specifically also advocacy, uh, the civil and public service, legal studies uh, and uh, 
the 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 wider area of uh, rights uh, in uh, both the workplace and in society. So. Now, handing uh, back uh, to my colleagues, uh, I'm going to uh, start with Katrina uh, to talk about arts management. So maybe Katrina, you could talk to us a little bit more about the kind of uh, things students do and what it's like uh, to work on arts management. On mute. You're on mute there, Katrina. There we go. Yep. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, um, just to, well to, to reiterate, just um, Kevin, some of the things that that, that you've um, just uh, mentioned. That um, I suppose with arts management, it you get a great kind of range in terms of of, of your study. Um, uh, you know, within business, uh, event management, music management, and kind of art related uh, related uh, subjects and. It's a great opportunity in terms of it's very kind of hands on uh, in terms of the experience um, that uh, you'll get, uh, especially in relation to, say, kind of running events and music, uh, visual arts and also uh, performance arts as well. Um, you saw the kind of the, the, the range in, in relation to the, the, the future kind of careers that one can kind of get into um, uh, in relation to music management festivals. You know, theatre, digital marketing, um, uh, hospitality, and um, finance, and 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 also management. Um, but I think probably kind of drilling down maybe a little bit more um, in terms of say certainly the kind of the 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 aims and maybe some of the um, you know some of the kind of the the learning outcomes uh, which give you this kind of very solid kind of foundation of what you're going to get out of this particular course. Um, is, you know, applying, I suppose, kind of very key concepts around, you know, the study of arts and uh, entertainment and, and, and also uh, arts management. And I suppose, you know, being able to kind of critically um, engage, you know, with, with, with key issues and kind of debates around um, arts entertainment and, and, and um, cultural um, enterprise and things like that. And, you know, one of the really big things which I, I think you know across all the courses is these you know the idea of what you're what you're what you're going to gain um is very kind of transferable very transferable skills um uh, in research uh, again marketing you know finance um and say cultural policy sort of uh, analysis and things like that and these are all kind of competencies that can be you know applied across a lot of uh, a lot of kind of contexts uh, in business and management and certain certainly kind of commercial skills. So we get a wide range of, of students that come out of this of this um, this course um, who might have come into it thinking that they, they want to do one thing and they, they end up, in fact, um, you know, I, I suppose getting a very kind of wide range um, in, in, in terms of um, a particular, uh, I suppose, aspects um of um of the arts uh and get involved in in some cases being kind of quite entrepreneurial which i think is kind of quite interesting uh, and also getting involved in in um you know the digital marketing end of things um which are two aspects that um you know a, a lot of number of students have 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 come out of in the last uh in, in the last uh, number of years so uh, that's just you know, quick kind of overview um, of um, you know the, the, what we do and 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 the course, and I suppose as I say, what you're going to, what you're basically going to come out of, certainly when it comes to your kind of learning, and also the aims of the course. Brilliant. Uh, thanks, Katrina. Um, yeah, and so Diog, I, I might turn to you uh, and ask you the the same about new media studies. <clears throat> OK, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Diogo O'Connell and I'm the program coordinator for New Media Studies. So uh, we are in we're, we have our third final years um, coming through this year. So again, it's a relatively new course and uh, it's a course that's evolving in response to changes in 
media technology and media platforms that you will be very familiar with, that you have grown up with um, and are, you know, very au fait with at a technical level. You're, I'm sure, all well able to make videos, etc. Um, what this course is about is really taking those skills that you already have, that you're very familiar with from your phones and your social media, etc., and placing them in a broader critical and creative context. So that's really the, the, the nub of the course. So we balance a theoretical and a practical approach in the sense that we um, teach modules in um, an area that helps you understand critically the broader uh, media. So it could be television media or news media, it could be radio, um, film, etc. So your theoretical modules would be modules such as cinema and cultural studies, media studies, Irish cinema, television drama, documentary studies, etc. So what we mean when we say theory, we mean that we're putting a kind of critical framework um, in place for you to understand how your practice works. So on the practical side then, um, what we do is we take the skills that you, you, you basic skills that you all probably have already about putting together image and sound. And over the four years, we explore more creative and experimental and um, more in-depth way of using those skills across a range of platforms. So you will take practical modules such as media production. So in each year there's uh, media production modules. So in, in those modules, you learn how to uh, work the radio studio, you learn how to make podcasts, you learn how to make videos, short films, documentaries, etc. We have uh, music modules, which give you an opportunity to do some practical work that pertains to the music industry. So some event organization or the production of uh, fanzines, for example, magazines, etc. Um, alongside that, you pursue studies in journalism. So you will study journalism as it um, works at a theoretical level or at a critical level, but also develop skills in writing journalism and producing journalism for uh, radio and television. And um, alongside that, again, you have um, a thread called digital skills, where you will learn the skills of um, digital technology, skills that are needed for uh, working online, for managing social media, uh, content creation, etc. So that, in a nutshell, is what you'll actually study. Um, it's a four year program, as Kevin said at the start. So we um, introduce a lot of theory in first year. The idea is that you then develop your critical um, skills alongside your creative skills as you move through second year into third year. The second semester of third year is an off campus semester. So you either have the opportunity to study abroad through Erasmus. So we have students who, who study in Spain, Germany, Italy, uh, Croatia, and um, a number of other um, um, opportunities, or you can, spend that semester on work placement in a media company. So um, that's a semester that gives you an opportunity to expand whether you want to do a study abroad programme or whether you want to gain relevant uh, work experience in the field of new media. And then the final year, um, we um, have a final year project, which is the opportunity for you to build a portfolio to include the work you've produced in other modules, but to specialise in areas that you are particularly interested in. And this equips you with leaving college on graduation with a portfolio of work of maybe a series of short videos or documentaries, podcasts, video essays. Um, if you're into editing, for example, video edits, um, you produce um, graphics and um, photography if you pursue a blog option. So that there's lots of areas by final year whereby you can really uh, fine tune and refine your craft and then build pieces of work that you put into that portfolio that you leave college with. So um, I hope that gives you a flavour of what we do. Um, one of our 
I suppose what makes this program different to other programs within the college, because the college is, um, has lots of programs in the um, creative industries field. So I suppose if there was one thing that I say new media studies is, is different, it is in the area of producing short pieces of media, either audio, video or the written word for new media platforms. So, for example, if you worked in RTE and uh, very often you would have to produce very short pieces of video on be it news or even drama or documentary. If you work in journalism in a newspaper nowadays, you'd often also have to accompany a print article with a short video. So um, if I was to kind of highlight something that makes this degree stand aside from the others, it is that you will leave the college well equipped with the ability to produce short um, forms of storytelling in both uh, audio, in the visual medium and also in, in the written word. So that I hope uh, gives you a good flavour of how we are distinct and also what, what, what we actually do. Thanks, Diog. That's brilliant. And uh, now I'll, I'll turn to Jakub and maybe Jakub, you could talk about the equality side and I'll talk about the English side of uh, both English and equality and English and media. Oh, ah, great. Yeah, thank you very much. So essentially what I'm going to talk about is the equality side of the EES programme that we have just started recently, just three years ago, in fact, Dara. Uh, was it Dara that was asking? I think it might be. Um, essentially, what I look at from my side of house, I look at things in relation to inequalities. So we're looking at the way in which inequalities might manifest within a society. We look at them both from the perspective of the individual, but try to situate it also in the context of society at large and maybe how collectively we construct ways in which inequalities then manifest. Um, we would start off the first year by looking at a range of di different approaches to analysing and different situations and contexts of uh, that relate to issues around uh, the fabric of society. We might look at religion and the role of religion historically and in contemporary times. We might look at education, how certain pathways in education can reproduce uh, certain outcomes in educational attainment and how that might be re relevant or related to um, class positions and so on. We look at identities, we look at things like gender identities, sexualities, and we try to take a very contemporary approach to our understanding of uh, sociological thought and framing um, to to an Irish context, but also br more broadly internationally. In year two, I, we moved the course over then towards looking more specifically at movements, so social justice movements. And in relation to that, we're try, we, I try to pair up what, what's considered to be eco-sociology, which I feel is very relevant um, and very pertinent to our contemporary circumstances to modern times. In year three, we shift towards then developing the school, the, the tools to research in the field and thinking about the different paradigms through which research can be conducted. So we look at research methods, but also then philosophical underpinnings or philosophical considerations in relation to them, as well as obviously ethics and, and morality in, in that regard too. Moving from there, in year four, we, we look towards then technology and culture, but also then we dig deeper into our understanding of cultural and media identities, as well as social identities and how they might be constructed. In a more practical sense, we shift towards also looking at EDI, so equity, diversity and inclusion. This is very useful if you're thinking about maybe working in an organization as an EDI officer or in in a diverse environment because it's a growing field and there is a growing recognition and acknowledgement of a need for people who are very, very well versed and very interested in intercultural communication and, and things such as that in workplace and in corporations, but also in governance 
across a multitude of different areas or different uh, sectors within our economy. Um, who who do we try or what am I aiming to gain from you? I'm hoping for you guys to become very well, very well versed on aspects relating to sociology and society generally to be able to then bring this knowledge, this well informed and robust understanding of applying theory and applying notions to researching in the field to be able to bring that and then embed yourself perhaps in in an international organization and or national organization. So you could be talking about, uh, you know, an institution such as the United Nations. We could be talking about certain areas within European governance. We could be looking at it at, on a more national or even subnational level. So we're thinking about positions within the civil service, but also maybe NGO and how they can work nationally and internationally. So again, leaning towards maybe advocacy, Thinking about other aspects such as in the context of EDI, we're leaning more towards maybe human resource and human resource management. But again, the EDI isn't necessarily just about corporations. We could be thinking about institutions. So bigger institutions like educational institutions and how they're encouraging equity, diversity and inclusion to become an embedded pra uh, practice within their organization. Yeah, that's about it. Have you any questions? Thanks, Aku. Well, I, I think we'll open up for questions uh, later on. Uh, I think we'll, we'll see them as they come in and uh, hopefully um, we'll be able to answer them all. But thanks for that. And uh, we'll, we'll probably come back in, in a moment's time. I'm going to talk now about the English side uh, of English and Equality Studies and English and Media Studies, the new degree DL841. So um, first of all, uh, just to remind you that uh, both uh, both degrees, DL841 English and Equality Studies and DL849 English and Media Studies will be three year honours degrees uh, that you'll be applying for. Um, each of them share the same English pathway throughout those couple of years. We start off talking about some of the kind of historical underpinnings of literature and then we move on and we talk uh, about different thematic responses across uh, the ideas of uh, post uh, colonialism, uh, but also dealing with uh, world literature, Irish literature, Anglophone literature, that's literature in English from across the world, uh, but also looking at specific movements like modernism, postmodernism, romanticism across those three years. Also throughout, there are two specific strands. One is of literary and critical theory, which is really important. It gives you the kind of theoretical skills to talk about literature, uh, but also partners with both the quality and media studies sides of the courses uh, and allows you to learn the kind of theoretical and philosophical frameworks with, within which you can engage with those ideas and which you can cross pollinate your ideas from either side of the course uh, with the other. So ideas that you're learning in literature about civil society are useful and underpinning of what you learn in quality studies and in media studies. There's also a good uh, strand uh, through uh, this de these degrees of uh, creative writing. It is not a creative writing degree, I'll say, but there is a strand in it, uh, particularly in first and second year. There's first of all, there'll be a course on kind of narrative practice uh, and then uh, which is which is about storytelling, uh, understanding the kind of theoretical, but also practical or writing uh, skills you need for telling stories. And then secondly, in in second year, there there are modules, for instance, uh, one being genres of popular fiction, which is uh, a module about uh, popular narratives and popular forms, but also has a creative writing component to it. So uh, it, what, what makes DL849 really unique as a course in English and media studies is that it is the only place in uh, Dublin that you can do this as a defined degree. So you can go and you can do an arts degree and you can combine English and media in other universities. That's fine. But what's unique about this is this is planned as a combination of subjects. It's an integrated 
uh, interdisciplinary approach. And both of the degrees that we're talking about here, English and equality and uh, English and media are working that way so that the modules talk to each other. And we have done extensive work over the years to encourage that and to find ways of making the subjects sing, uh, if, you, if you like, and making the subjects bounce off one another and lead to a really interesting kind of learning journey that the students go on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop talking. Uh, and I'm going to now hand over to the students, uh, but I'm also going to ask you if you have questions, please do throw them into the chat. Uh, we'll try uh, and answer everything there. But uh, what I might do is I might invite Catherine from New Media Studies and Sarah for English and Equality Studies uh, to uh, turn on the cameras and their mics and to talk about, first of all, what it's like in general to be a student at IEDT. Catherine, go ahead. Um, so I'm Catherine. I'm year two in new media studies, and I think I'll just discuss the fact that um, it's already been discussed what we do. Um, so I'll talk about more in detail how good it is for helping you figure out what you might want to do. Um, it's such a broad course. You do like music industries, digital skills, um, podcasts, short films. It's if you're like me and you love um, both producing and creative writing, um, you get to do both very often. Um, and it's also got a really good atmosphere. Uh, it's a smallish uh, year we have for second year and we all get on really well it's been such a great opportunity to make connections so far um and friends at the end of the day and we've been doing projects uh inspired by ones we've done in college now outside of college people have left the music industries and gone off and made a successful band and i've, I've been personally helping them with their music videos and all so like we're already going out there and producing media from what we've learned it's a really good experience uh we're on campus a lot and uh we get to use um the equipment i know that next week we'll be in the uh the new radio recording studio for a uh, radio production so that'll be very fun. Um, yeah, uh, if there's any uh, specific questions anyone wants to ask, go ahead. But overall, it's just been a really great experience. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll hand it over to Sarah. Hi, so I'm Sarah. I'm in my second year of English and Equality Studies and I would agree with Catherine that the course is very broad and varied. Um, no one day is the same and you're learning a lot, which also gives you endless career opportunities. Um, also, all the modules are so intertwined with one another. For example, in critical theory and politics, we're looking at post-colonialism. And in the Irish Literary Revival module, we're looking at the nation. So we can apply what we learn in critical theory and politics to English. So that's really helpful. Um, and I think it strikes a good balance between English and equality. So, and if you have a passion for social justice and you consider yourself an activist, then I would highly recommend this course. Um, it's also, you learn everything in the context of current affairs as well. So you're up to date with everything and you're applying all the theory you're learning to current affairs. So that's also good. And the atmosphere in the college is amazing. Um, you know your lecturers on a more personal basis because the classes are smaller. They know you more and they can like track your development and that kind of thing. So that's nice. And uh, there's great societies and all that kind of thing. So yeah, I'd really recommend it if you know you love English novels, poetries, you learn about all the literary geniuses and if you're a social justice activist then yeah definitely do this course Brilliant. thanks sarah and, and, and thanks catherine um 
so yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to throw it open uh, to, to to everyone in the chat to, to ask us questions. Uh, one thing that is is being uh, asked here is if we have a I can I can see it uh, here in one of the questions if we have a high dropout rate. One one thing I'll say is IDT uh, has an extremely low dropout rate in general because uh, it's a portfolio based course. So some are, are mainly on the other side of the college portfolio based. But even on our side of the college, we still have quite good retention rates, which would be up in the 80 percent, uh, which is higher than they are in other universities, which would be in around 70 percent. Um, that does vary sometimes, uh, but uh, in general, uh, one thing we have is we do have small class sizes. So, for example, in English and Equality Studies, there are 20 places. In New Media Studies, there are 40 places. In uh, arts management, there are um, around 40 places as well. Uh, and in English and media, there will be 40 places. That's th those are not huge courses. So sometimes, yeah, if you if you've a couple of people that drop out from some of those years, it can it can feel it can feel like if four people drop out, it can it can, it can seem like a lot, but it's 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 not really. We we have a decent retention rate here at IDT. And uh, we've also got great student services here. So one thing you should look at is our student services, a student experience page on our website. So we have vast experience of working with people of, of different abilities uh, and uh, it, it also working with people uh, who are have various uh, levels of ability. Uh, and uh, if you want more information on that, you can look at it the website there. You can also uh, ask our admissions office uh, for information if you are someone who's applying from a desk school or you are applying to either the HERE or DARE programmes and you can ask for advice specifically from there about that. Uh, so actually, someone's just asked a, a, a dare question. As far as I know, uh, it uh, and Orla might correct me on this, but but admissions will correct. There There is something like um, uh, I I think it is, I think it is ten percent. Uh, I can be corrected on that. Uh, of the 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 courses are set aside, but I don't think that the um. Uh, I I don't think that that's in some of our courses. I don't think that that's even um necessarily uh, a, a huge factor. Um, and it's always worth talking to our admissions office about that. I think as far as I understand, once you apply through through, for example, uh, here, uh, sorry, dare, um, even if you aren't coming in on your dare points, you still get allocated the resources uh, for coming through dare. Uh, so that's that's worth a specific contact to our admissions office about. Um, yeah, okay. and one other thing I forgot to, and, and thanks Orla for, for putting up the, the information there, but there, one specific thing I didn't mention is, or fully mention, is our entry requirements. So our entry requirements to English and Equality and to English and Media Studies require you to have at least a H4 in English for both of those programmes. You need to have at least two honours at H5 and pass at everything, but you should also have, you must have a H4 in English for those two programs. For arts management, you need um, your two H5s, pass everything else. You have to have passed English at either honours or pass level, and you also need to have passed maths at honours, pass, or even foundation level. You need to have done maths in your Leaving Cert and passed it some way for that uh, program. Um, and for new media studies, you just need your two H5s and pass everything else in the Leaving Cert. So that, so that's everything. I think uh, sometimes people ask what our points range, our expected points range is, and I say it's a complete lottery. Uh, I'd be lying to you if I told you I could tell you what the points will be. I can tell you what they were, and I can tell you on average what they, the kind of range that they were uh, or, or that they're in. Um, 
uh, and they range. Uh, if, if you're getting in and around 300 points for any of these courses, you're pretty safe. They've ranged. Some courses here have ranged in more closer to 250 and others have been around 300 for a, a few years. I can see as well a question has just popped in uh, for our students. So Catherine and, and Sarah, you might want to answer this one. What's your favorite part of the college? Um. I think my favourite part of the college is probably the social aspect. It's a small college, so you get to know everybody a lot better than you would say in a bigger university. And there's also a good um, society culture, so I'd really recommend joining societies because you get to meet new people that way. I know I have this year through the Common Gaelic Society, so definitely join the societies and yeah. Uh. We have a specific room called the chapel um, and it's basically like a inverted church space that is for students, kind of like a little hub um, that people can go to and relax. And sometimes they'll have like, um, I think they've had like karaoke or um, it's just a space with a stage for societies if needed. Um, that's a really nice hangout. So that's a nice little area. And then I think definitely agreed that the people are my favorite part of this college. Just the amount of creatives here is amazing. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Sarah. And I suppose uh, I would say I'm actually a graduate of IDT myself from a very long time ago. It shows you how old the college actually is that I am one. But um, uh, it is a really unique place to study because you get to mix whether you're studying English or you're studying media studies or you're studying psychology or graphic design or film or art or whatever. You get to mix with all of these people and that's something that you can only do here. It is really an amazing vibe that you get from that kind of creative churn uh, of people as well. Uh, so you get to make great friends uh, across all the courses and that's a, a useful segue you'd think I'd planned it, uh, to say that a lot of the courses that we're talking about here are shared. So we have modules that are, you study in arts management and new media studies at the same time, modules you study in English and media and English equality at the same time, and some that you study across three of those programs at the same time. Um, and uh, yeah, actually, I think we are joined as well uh, by uh, Eilish uh, from Arts Management just now. So um, Eilish, if you want to turn on your mic and camera, maybe you could say a, a, a few words about what it's like uh, to study uh, Arts Management. Yeah, um, sorry, I was having an issue joining, so um didn't get to change the picture in the background yet. But um yeah, no, I'm in year four, uh, arts management. Um, and yeah, no, I, I'm enjoying the course, the it, the people as well in the course. Um, everyone kind of has a different goal, which is interesting. So I originally got into it because I love music. And, um, you know, I wanted to originally do music business, but through the course got more interested in the more cultural side of it, cultural policy. Um, so, um, side of it as well so now I'm actually more interested in uh, access to culture especially to young people in Ireland so that's something I'm interested to get into as well especially after um, I finish up so yeah no it's just uh, basically uh, looking at the arts in Ireland and worldwide but through a business lens as well so you really get to get a good grasp of business like taxation we do finance which is like just really good knowledge to have as well because um, a lot of people that go into the arts uh, become self-employed as well. So you not only get an insight to the, the arts, but also how to manage yourself and others, which is just really helpful um, as well. So, you yeah, know, it's, it's a really good course and you have so many options. Um, you're not restricted in it by any means. Like, as I said, I went in interested in music business and now I'm more into the cultural side of it. So there's def definitely like different pathways you can go down. You're not just focused on one thing. Uh, you can always change your mind or get into something new, especially every term we get um, new subjects as well as some old ones kept on. So you're constantly learning new things, which is really good as well. And like just adding on knowledge that you can use and apply once you finish up 
um, and going to the big bad world. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Eilish. No um, and I, I suppose uh, there was a question in to, to, to the students earlier on asking, what's your favourite part of the college? So I might ask you as well. My favourite part? Um, like I said, like even in my class, uh, numbers are quite small in my class, so everyone has gotten to know each other really well. And everyone kind of has their own interests and their own view of the course and like what they want to do. Not No two people really want the same thing. So it's just interesting meeting all these people and seeing what they're going on to do. And it's good for networking as well. And I guess just that itself, like just interacting with people. And there's so many interesting people in the college. So, you know, there's always someone else to talk to and like see what they're interested in. So that's I like that about the course in the college. Brilliant. Thanks, Anish. And uh, just just uh, before I bring everyone back to say thank you and, and, and good night, everyone, I can see that there are a few questions in it. I, I, I might have missed one was asking about English uh, teaching qualification for from our English courses. I think Claire put that in. Um, yes, is the answer to your question, if I'm understanding it right. We don't offer masters in education here ourselves, but both our English degrees are designed so that you can go on and do the postgraduate um, or professional masters in education uh, as it is now in English uh, from that. And, uh, you know, we will be looking at making sure that people who do English and media can can go on and teach the um, the new Leaving Cert course in film, drama and theatre as well. So that's something that we will we will be looking at as well. So, yes, you can go on to secondary school teaching uh, from those two degrees. Uh, and uh, from English and Equality, the 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 other course that people can do is uh, CPSE um, or CSP. Apologies, I get my acronyms wrong. Um, other than that, um, if anyone does have a question, um, please fire it into us here. The first thing I'll say is that I highly recommend coming to see us at Open Day. We have another Open Day on the 25th of March. So really, 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 please do come down and see us. Uh, it's great to have a sense of the place and to meet our staff and students on campus and see what it's really like so you can feel that you fit in. And IDT is a hugely welcoming place. It really is somewhere. It's a small number of students overall, two and a half thousand max at the moment. Uh, that will probably grow in the future, uh, but two and a half thousand is what we have at the moment. Uh, and uh, that means that we do have a wonderful environment where students are able to, to mingle uh, across courses, um, but also uh, to feel at home in, in, in this environment. And that's that's really important. And I will say to you, just whatever course you're going to do, whatever you really want to do, um, make sure you go to that college and you walk around and you make sure you feel you can fit in because whether it's a three year or four year course, you're spending a lot of time there for the, for the next couple of years. So make sure the place is right for you. OK, so uh, I think there are a couple of questions just about to come in. Uh, oh, just a, a thank you. Uh, and um, this, I'm going to say if you do have further questions, you can contact uh, me at kevin.wallace at idt.ie and I'll pass you on uh, to the relevant person if I can't answer your question. You can also get us at info at idt.ie and that will come through, I think, Orla as well as um, uh, coming to myself as well. Um, so, um, and I want to say thank you to the panel tonight. Thanks to the students, uh, Catherine, Sarah and Eilish. And thanks also to, to my colleagues, uh, Diog, Jakub and Katrina. Thank you all very, very much. Uh, and uh, best of luck to everyone doing the Leaving Cert. Uh, I hope uh, the next uh, few months are good and that everything goes well for you. Thank you. See you all. Best thank you, Kevin. Everybody. And thanks thank everyone for coming. for coming along. Yeah. Okay, that's great. I'll turn off the recording now.